Oh, hey, what's going on? Glad you stopped by to hang out with me for a few minutes today. Well, today I thought I'd show you something kind of unique and special. At least to me, anyway. Have you ever seen the Tandy Color Computer? <laughs> so this is of the TRS-80 line, and this is the Color Computer 2. There are three different versions of this. I think they released each one about two years apart. Each one in the sequence was a little better, a little faster than the last one. But then they all played games. Right here on the side, the slot where you can slide games into this thing and play. Now, I got this. It was a present from Santa Claus. Christmas of 1984. I was six years old. And this is actually mine from when I was a kid. And it still works. <laughs> Unfortunately, the capture cord I have right now will not record footage from this thing. And uh, the same with the Master System, Genesis, Atari. I'm sure you guys have run into this at some point. Uh, it, it looks real grainy and has lines through it. It just doesn't do very good. Something about the frame rate. But I'm looking for another one because I want to show you this. These are cool. So if you look here at this keyboard, it's similar to today's, but the letters and numbers are all in the same spot, of course. They have been for a hundred years. There's the buttons around it that are different. So I'm looking over here at my iPad. Now there's like 62 buttons around all the letters and numbers. And this one, there's only a handful. You see here, on the side, here's up and down. Here's left and right. That's over there with your number pad now on this side. This red button here, it says break. That pauses your game when you're playing a video game. <laughs> and this button here says clear. That's backspace when you're typing stuff out. And there are a lot of text-based adventure dungeon crawler games for this. I had one called Dungeons of Daggerath when I was a kid. When I first got it, I didn't like it. I didn't know what in the world was going on. When I got a couple years older, I was able to read more in the manual and understand what it was saying, that you had to type out all the commands and different things for it to do. It was a fun game. I wish I still had it. I do not have my actual games from when I was a kid. This is another one I got put in a box with my Master System 2 and was found years later. And the games were gone for it. I have no idea what ever happened to them. And the controllers. I had no controllers for it. But I've got some since then. And I've been able to get a few of the games back that I had. I've only got a handful here. But one, two, three, four of these I actually had from when I was a kid. And I probably had four or five more when I was a kid. These were not very expensive. This was a pretty affordable computer. And this thing would do a lot more than play video games. It, you could do a lot of coding and programming with it if you understood all that stuff and this thing you could get a the five inch floppy disk drive for it there was even a tower i remember seeing a tower in radio shack which is the only place you could have got this tandy had a deal with radio shack and that was their line of computers like i said there was a, a tower of the five inch floppy disk there was a cassette player for this the old cassette games uh, there was one that fit with this i never had that never had the cassette games there was a dot matrix printer you could, could have gotten for this thing <laughs> my mom of course said well you can do your homework and type it out and print it and take it to the teacher how much homework do you think i did with this thing i'll give you one guess <laughs> and i remember i also got that same christmas like a gift certificate not a card it was on a piece of paper <laughs> for Radio Shack and a couple days after Christmas my mom took me up there and I was going to get another game and I remember the guy behind the counter started going into all this stuff you could do with this thing about coding and programming and I'm looking at him like and the games go here right <laughs> okay <laughs> I don't even know anything else 
I, I wish I would have known more about that back in the day. Because I know there are people older than me, not by much, of course, but that I've heard talk about having these and making their own games and doing all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Man, I missed out. I was just a little bit too young for that. Explaining that to a six-year-old in the early 80s, you might as well try to have me decipher Egyptian hieroglyphics or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? Now, the only game system I had ever seen before this was the Atari 2600. My neighbor down the street had one. I didn't know of any of the other home systems. I knew nothing of the Intellivision or ColecoVision, Magnavox Odyssey, the 4,322 Pong systems. I knew nothing about them. When I seen this, I thought, man, this is so cool because it looks better than the Atari. It, the games are, that use sprites. It just looks a lot better. The control's better. It's just better. It really is. So here <laughs> is the controller for the Tandy. You see it's not quite a square. It's sort of rounded off a little bit. It's very small. It has one button on the front here. And look at that little bitty joystick. <laughs> now this is one of the first analog controllers. But I'm going to show you something strange about this. Well, I shouldn't say strange or odd or anything like that because, you got to remember, this is the early 80s. Now what do you think of when you think of analog? You think of the D-pad. Watch this. It does not come back to the center. <laughs> I kid you not. If you're playing a game and you're moving your character to the left, I mean, that's cruise control. You can sit here, your character going to keep moving to the left. <laughs> you got to pull it back to the center. And you can see it's not very tough. It ain't like the Atari joystick. <laughs> There's multiple ways to do this. I've seen people hold it like this, something like this. <laughs> Is it the greatest joystick? No. Am I very nostalgic for it? Yes. <laughs> but it is fun. Once you get used to it, and it does take a minute because, like I said, it's weird playing an analog controller that doesn't come back to center. Like you need to let off the D-pad, it pops right back to center. Most of your joysticks let off, it pops back to the center. No such luck here. <laughs> hey, this is still a lot of fun. And I have just plain old pinball. Now these games are kind of weird. If you've never seen one of these, a little slot here that slides back to open for the chipboard. And they do just slide right inside here. Like that. And they go in and out pretty easy. So the pinball in here is pretty good. It's a decent pinball game for when it was made better than one on the Atari. Now of course to play this you'd need two buttons. The controller only has one. So you use the system itself just like you would on playing pinball on your modern laptop. There's two buttons here that control the flippers. I do not remember which ones right now. <laughs> then I have a game called Demolition Derby. Now this is one that I had as a kid and I've been able to get another copy of it. This one's pretty cool. You're going, it's a top of, or bottom to top racing game, top down view. You're going along and you got to ram stuff into the wall and that's how you score points. And there, certain ones give you points, certain ones give you more fuel. But you got to be careful. You'll hit them and you kind of bounce off of them. You're bouncing them in the wall, but you don't want to bounce yourself into the wall. <laughs> so it's a pretty fun game. You should probably check that one out on YouTube, I guess. Man, these things. You don't see many of these on eBay, and when you do, people usually ask a decent price for them. And I've not been able to find a price list for these things anywhere. It's not on price charting. I don't know where you would find a list that would tell you what the value of this system or any of these games that I have looked. So here I have one called Handyman. This is not a game. It looks like a game, but it's a ruse. You know what this is? 
if you were a handyman this is more of a program module you program you can go in here and it has a list of all kinds of different things to be fixed around the house all kinds of odd jobs and stuff that you would hire a handyman for and if you were the handyman you would use this as your data sheets you could already have preset numbers for how much you're making an hour for certain jobs or for doing this or that you could already go in here and program it in if you had this with you or you go back to your house after quoting a job you could print out a quote just by entering okay i gotta do this and take this many hours boom it'll make the quote for you and there it is send to your customer and you also could run the carbon copy um sheets through the old dot matrix printer i know y'all remember those had the holes down the side that fed it through some of them i know you remember seeing them were two and three copies it had a pink and a yellow sheet on the back and it would print through the carbon copy and that'd be the receipt for your customer so you could do receipts and quotes and just program all kinds of information into this game sorry not a game into this oh, is it a program module is it i don't know what do you call that it's not a game but if you were a handyman and had this back in the day that's kind of cool <laughs> so here i have one called mega bug this is very similar to pac-man into as to what's going on you're in a maze you're eating up little dots and there are enemies little spiders in the maze with you of course they hit you you die on this one you get one life game over and this one actually talks it has synthesized voice over stuff in it the one weird thing about this one again oh, it's not weird wherever you are at on the screen it magnifies it the maze takes up the whole screen and it's tiny i mean it's huge it'll, it'll take you five minutes to beat one of the mazes on this but then wherever you're at it blows it up like magnifies it puts a little square there so you can see around you where you're at so you gotta kind of pay attention outside of your square see if you're getting close to any of the spiders because they blink as you're going around the maze and you can see them coming near you but by the time they get inside that square it's almost too late <laughs> but this is a really really fun game so check a video out of that if you haven't ever seen this sometime i'll get my capture card for this and I, i'm going to record some of these i want you to see these so here i have one called canyon climber this one will have to go into the same category as donkey Kong. You know, the stage takes up the whole screen you've got to make your way from the bottom up and around through all the obstacles to the top and there's four or five stages and then of course when you beat it well you don't really beat it <laughs> it's all about score it starts you back at the first stage and it's a little harder now it looks different from donkey Kong. this one does not look as good as donkey Kong. The arcade game looks better than one on the Atari, <laughs> but it, it's just a different type of character. You're going up through the mountains, there's stuff falling, there's birds coming out, ladders you climb up and down. This one doesn't really use a sprite character, it kind of has like a stick man, sort of. <laughs> but it sort of reminds me of something like Pitfall or Donkey Kong, a cross between that. And the last one I have for now another game that I had when I was a kid this is the flagship for the Tandy color computers this one's called Downland if you ever had one of these or knew anybody that had this system they most likely had this game because this is what all the clerks in Radio Shack would tell you this is the best game for this system you have to play this <laughs> and they are not kidding they were 100% right this game is fun it's another one sort of in the style of Donkey Kong but yet a lot deeper there are 12 or 13 caverns pages in this but it's all a big maze like you may see a section of the screen up here that'll be part of a cavern but you can't get to it you gotta work your way all around up through it to even get back over there and you gotta find keys in this one to open doors you'll go around you'll get a key and you'll see a door open up here you go through that you may get this key and the door opens up way over here but you can't even get there yet so you got to keep going 
there was one part where you go all the way around, you get a key and you see it, you're in one of those little caverns up here in the corner, and you get the key and it opens one back down here where you were at five minutes ago. <laughs> so you gotta backtrack all the way back around to go into one door that wasn't there before. <laughs> This game was a lot of fun. I cannot wait to show you this game. So that's what I've got there. Not a whole lot. Like I said, this is one that's kind of hard to find stuff for. I've been searching for a few more of the games that I had as a kid for a few years now. And I'll give them back eventually, but I am a budget collector. <laughs> I look for deals. If somebody's asking $50, 60 for one of these on eBay, pass roll on to the next one but there's never a lot of this stuff on there so I may mean, have to bite the bullet sometime <laughs> to get the ones back that I used to have but I hope you enjoyed that this is a really cool system if you've never seen it before check it out look into it there are a few people that play this on YouTube not many glad to stop by and hang out with me for a few minutes today I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time